Alex here from Fatua Mano. Today I would like to start my new project which is making a till for my planes. I recently got a few wooden planes um, and I just restored uh, three of them and I'm really really happy how they turned out so I decided to uh, empty this area and make a, a till uh, for my planes. Um, I'm missing a couple but I will account this in the space and uh, it happens to be that a, a friend of mine a few months ago gave me a piece of ash. I have already sawn this. Um, I had used a uh, bandsaw, my bandsaw for this as you can see. I tried to store them at the best I could uh, and tried to saw them also at the best I could and uh, needless to say they, they, they warped but it's a beautiful piece so I'm just going to start the process of uh, uh, thickening it. Um, some boards are better than others, uh, for example this one uh, dried way too quickly. When I got it unfortunately um, it was already drying and I couldn't really prevent this. There is a, a quite substantial split um, in here. However I should have ample amount of material so what I'm going to do I'm going to um, saw again uh, this time by hand all the way across to get a, a, an edge and pieces. Needless to say flattening this if you split it in uh, uh, more than one piece you actually may lose less of the wood. So you can see that I need uh, about five of these boards so I should have just about enough and uh, let's hope that. Now I will start to saw the pieces and then I'm going to flat uh, one face first and then start to flat one edge um, and then all the other faces will follow. So first thing I'm going to do is obviously clear the bark and I just started here and uh, making sure that I also take away the sap. Here we are, uh, draw a straight line and now I'm going to cut it. I have now cut all the pieces uh, to make up the actual uh, panel side where the planes will actually rest on and as you can see there are all uh, different sizes uh, because I obviously had to take whatever I could in depending upon where it was in the wood. So now I just need to decide which orientation and then start to take them uh, to size. As I'm getting the stock close to uh, the measurement and the thickness that I want, I'm experiencing quite a lot of tear out. It's, um, it's quite deep in some areas. I think the main reason why is because the grain runs very, very close to the uh, pith in here. I'm not sure if you can see um, this area here. So, for example, in this bit, it keeps constantly going in and out of the surface and despite I've used my low angle with a very close mouth and a very very sharp edge uh, the tear out is actually quite uh, substantial so I will have to see what I can do um, about that. That's the orientation I chose so now I just need to join the face and then one side. Now that I have one uh, face that is uh, flat and I'm very happy with in all the um, in all the pieces I'm proceeding to make this face parallel to the front face. I'm doing this slightly the other way around because what I was 
normally planning to do was to join the face sides and join, join an edge and then once I have this edge reference I can then join this edge and then lastly this uh, face so I can thickness it however I'm doing this way around I just feel more comfortable I don't know if he's right or wrong and the reason being is I want these two surfaces completely parallel because then I'm planning to join the um, two pieces uh, as in double into the vise and I will show you this uh, a little bit later I just found this through trial and error that for me works best so here we go now thicknessing um, this side and so I need to measure this 16 16.72 16.58 16.23 16.18 16.12 so this is the lowest point um, so given that um, I'm going to start from here and mark all the areas that are the highest. So I have about half a millimeter in here and here we are. Now that I've done these passes, now obviously there will be some form of camber which is high in the center so I'm going to run a pass in here so higher number of passes in here and then diluting that without touching this edge. So now I'm going to move, uh, I'm going to skew the plane still but slightly moving across starting from the back which is this uh, uh, the same uh, level so I'm starting a little bit further out. Down a bit more this way, last bit, there you are. So that was the highest spot, so now I'm going to run the whole one but still starting from here because this is the lowest point. The shaving are really fine, so Keep moving across. Now this is the back, so I'm going to leave this one slightly hollow. The important bit is that it's not proud like it is now. Um, in some of the timber, um, I have to. I have to plane it so carefully and still uh, I'm still finding massive amount of tear out this is how close to the pith this actually is so God knows how long it's gonna stay flat but I'm hoping that if I glue it and then put it into a structure it should move a little bit less but you know um, I have changed the blade I decided to go straight for the 50 degree angle and it seems that uh, it's, it's, it's having way less uh, tear out in fact since I've been using this it hasn't had hardly any so I'm hoping to keep going with this very light shapes um, tiny little bit there just join it a bit more yeah that's that's okay just a tiny little bit there but at the end of the day um, so volatile uh, as far as orientation that I don't really have another way. That's nice.
I really really like as the last finish to actually be one of the uh, wooden planes. I don't know for some reason it's just really really lovely to the touch um, and I believe that the wood would burnish the um, wooden wood the burnish is different um, so when I have to remove quite a bit of material uh, or it's really really hard to get it nice and flat I tend to use uh, my number fives um, I have a five and a half which I haven't restored yet um, is in a little bit of a state so that'll take me a while um, so after the jointer I go either to number six or number five grain like this is a bit of a nightmare really you know one of those moments that you think uh, should I put it through the thickness of plane <laughs> but this is an unplugged project um, except for the bunsel um, but you know all of this has to be done by hand so uh, this is a very very light pass to just really smooth off uh, the, the, the high spots and it's just really really lovely so this was the last of the pieces and um, the last pass I've done is with um, this um, kind of number six uh, size um, which I restored. It was still reasonably open mouth but it, um, the last shaving I had honestly they, they go up rather than down. They're, they're really beautiful. Um, but the shaving is not, I've never been really interested too much in the shaving unless I try to understand what goes wrong uh, <laughs> if the shaving are not good. Um, and I'm not sure if you can actually see the reflection, the shine. It is absolutely beautiful. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to, to go low enough to remove um, this uh, little tear out. And I'm going to have to suck it up. And uh, that's that. Uh, there are other two that I'm really not happy with. And... Uh, one is the piece number six and the other one is similar unfortunately this one is 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 pretty bad the spice is finished there is one here i'm not sure if i can get it onto the light uh, but it's a good millimeter just under a millimeter deep and either take everything down still with the risk of not really resolving much uh, and having the same problem it's gonna go on the planes as a um, you know the planes are gonna sit on it so it's not something that is on view I know is there so that's the main problem um, however I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it like this and uh, as I want to leave this project uh, completely unplugged so I don't want to use you know sanders or, or thicknesses planers and things like that so uh, new lesson learned um, don't actually quite fully know what's the lesson but let's see so quite happy with that uh, I just checked and there is a difference between uh, all of these uh, eight points are measured of about two sheets of paper which I'm really happy um, in the end this is the back so the important bit is that this one is completely flat and when I do the glue them up and put the bars across they will all line up um, properly so the amount of work I need to do after glue up as long as the, the bars are actually glued up uh, together properly then should be really minimal okay so now I'm gonna start to uh, join uh, the uh, edges and as mentioned earlier I decided to take this face uh, this is the face side and this face parallel to one another first normally I would do face and then edge edge and the last face however this time I'm not going to do that because there is a quite long uh, big glue up so what I'm going to do you can see the gap in here that is a bit rocky um, I'm going to take the boards um, fold them back like this um, it's just a technique that I'm sure you, you have come across before if not there are plenty of YouTube videos that you know or people that would teach that I'm gonna put it on a flat surface uh, to get uh, all the high spots uh, lined up I'm gonna put a clamp so I know it doesn't move in here and then the other side just making sure that I'm um, just rocking it 
uh, I apply pressure from, for both and then I tighten the clamps. So now that is locked uh, and then flip it over onto the vise. And there you go. So the first thing I tend to do is, uh, first of all, um, see, check for square. So, um, not sure if you can see, probably not, but there is a quite strong gap in there. So, same as always, uh, take a pencil, uh, follow the line and mark whatever the points are. So, for example, this is slightly proud on the side. So that's all out on this side. So that's the proud side. Um, so I don't get confused, that's my marking. Um, I don't join with wooden planes uh, purely because they just get worn out very quickly. So I don't have something as, I actually do have something as small as this, which I could try. However, I want to have something slightly longer. So if he's very, very far out, I tend to use a, um, a jointer, like a number seven, or even a number six, that could be okay. Then if I need to check different spots <coughs> or address um, maybe certain high spots, I use my number five. Here we go. there in fact you can see that that came out mainly this side still visible the line so it's still i'm still high on there oh just skew that and doing it in this method even if i am a little bit out so let's assume that i'm planing it but is they're both like that when i turn them over they still actually meet the only thing i i, I would suggest to pay attention is that this is great for joining uh, this way but not great that way or that way so if in this for for the long side if it's concave or convex um, this one will not address that issue so you may end up with two boards that do that or do that with a gap in the middle or a gap to the side so in order to address that then in this case, for example, I take the edge of my jointer and then go across. Um, blimey, this is actually spot on. That's impressive. Okay, that's good. Um, so now that I know that this is more or less flat, I really only need to address this line here and then keep checking with reference um, like that. Um, one thing I found, um, this is now uh, jointed, um, and I'm going to check in a minute, um, right in front of you, so I hope he's alright, <laughs> um, is that, um, generally speaking, when, when, when we're playing, especially with metal playing, but with any plane, we want, as soon as, as we are just about to engage, um, really need to take the pressure down here, without putting any weight, as I mentioned. And as we go, as soon as it engages, then as soon as this hand is directly supported by the wood from the plane, then we can apply equal amount of pressure still in that direction. This is what I'm, I'm imagining to basically do this motion. But as we come out here, I let this one go virtually altogether because I find that uh, joining is even more... Um, um, easy to basically create dents in here and then it's going to get a ripple and then you see that it's going to drive you a bit potty so uh, from here engage and let go so in this way we're just making sure that we're taking uh, we're engaging correctly and when the plane blade is presented to the wood it's not going to be at a skew <coughs> to then ruin this corner I would say that there is a hair 
I can just feel a hair here. In fact, I want to make sure. Yeah, this corner is a little bit low. Just the corner here, when I can feel a little dig, uh, there is a there is a mark in here. So uh, this is obviously longer than what I need. So I think I'm, we're just going to be fine because this is going to be um, because this is going to be cut. See if the rumble I had earlier actually works. It worked. I know it does. Okay. Obviously, I'm holding it like this. Uh, personally, um, I'm very happy with this. Very, very, very happy. So, uh, awesome. Just look at the orientation of the wood. There is a join. Uh, there is a join here. There is another one here. Um, another one here. Another one here. Another one here. And the last one here. So I'm really happy also with the orientation um, there are a few, only a few that are very visible but they're not glued yet so um, let's wait and see what that is going to be look like. Just about ready to glue up. Uh, what I've done is that I left the timber uh, for a while after joining uh, to just really let it settle um, and in fact I was right when I go back and um, um, basically looked at how flat it was and how square it was but more importantly how uh, it was joined together between different boards I got uh, not a lot but I got a worth of uh, very very fine shaving and tuning that I had to do um, out of it needless to say uh, this would have been nothing major yet it wouldn't look as precise so ready to glue up. Seem to have come out uh, pretty well. I'm really really glad that I spent that little extra time to refine and finesse the actual uh, joints as it looks. Really really happy with it. So in here I have a tiny little problem because the grain is going against uh, what I'm planning from and obviously with here. So I could do this two ways. I can start from here and plane this way and then planing this way or try to go for a pass. I have a 50 degree blade in the, the low angle so I'm going to attempt to do this and see. Very light passes, very close mouth and I think we're good. Yeah, very happy with that. So I'll just plane it this way and hope for the best. Change the plan. Just approaching doing the very last pass with my um, number five. And as you may be able to see here, there is a decent chunk that actually came off. 
all the shavings were really really fine and proceeding really really well really smooth and then this bit came off completely so um, I'm gonna use my block plane still with a 50 degree angle blade very close mouth again and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna uh, plane from this bit this way where the grain is going up this way and then starting from the center going up as the grain changes direction so now is flat and uh, managed to remove the bit missing that was there so very happy with that and uh, is already been jointed and nice straight side edge now just doing exactly the same um, I have done for the front panel uh, for the back panel so jointing all the uh, timber here um, so right now at the stage of same thing doing flat face first doing the face side uh, then I will proceed to do the opposite side first and then the two sides <coughs> um, one thing I just wanted to mention if this is uh, very very rough sawn um, is all kind of undulated <clears throat> if the um, spots are quite if the high spots are quite further apart I had to prop it underneath because basically what was happening was that as I was taking a quite substantial heavy shaving with my wooden jointer it was actually flexing so as soon as you start to apply uh, some pressure with rather um, thick uh, to get out of quite a lot of material so thick shaving then the actual <clears throat> timber will flex and despite the shaving was uniform all the way across what was actually happening it was flexing so when I actually released the pressure from the plane and tried with my uh, straight edge it was actually <clears throat> convex so um, just a little tip um, in order to save you some uh, some time <clears throat>